as someone who met Putin countless times, what you made of that pre-recorded uh, statement that he put out to the country yesterday, and crucially, the reaction we've seen from his own people in the form of trying to book flights to get out of there, the roads being blocked, and these protests across 30 cities and widespread arrests as well. Yeah. Uh, Putin's statement yesterday was a very substantial raising of the stakes and, in a sense, committing himself even more firmly to the war than he was already. Um, and the, he, he has been resisting for a long time, launching the mobilization, which he launched yesterday, precisely because he knew that this would not be popular among the Russian people. Uh, the effect of the mobilization, in any case, is not going to, it's because these people have to be trained, have to be assembled, all of that, is not going to make a huge amount of difference to the war over the next few weeks. And we'll have to see whether the Russians can stop Ukraine's quite spectacular successes over the past few weeks, or whether, if, if they can't, then I would suspect they're on the run. If they can, then we've got quite a long stalemate through the winter, and a lot can happen in that time. Yeah. On the state of Russian public opinion, yes, there are demonstrations, in particular in Moscow and St. Petersburg and various other cities. Yes, there have been people obviously buying air tickets to get out and get away from the danger of being conscripted. And yes, there is a possibility of quite a strong Russian public reaction against what Putin has announced and maybe a real threat to the regime. I have to say, I think that threat is really rather low. There's quite a long history of, if I could put it this way, Russian public inertia and sort of just the habit of support for their regime. And my guess is that that will reassert itself in this case as well. But the difference this time is that you uh, conscript 300,000 people, you're affecting families all over Russia. So the danger to Putin is probably a bit higher than it has been in previous such events. Go on. So I was just saying, what about the international response to all of this? I mean, condemnation about what he's doing and what he's said. But I mean, clearly, there has to be an acknowledgement that... Um, the, the more he is pushed into a corner, the more dangerous he is becoming. Yeah, I, well, two things. The international response, the bit of the international response that we've seen, which is from the West, has been admirably and predictably solid reaffirmation by Liz Truss uh, earlier, by Biden, by Macron, by all of that. Uh, Putin must have expected that, and, and he's got it. The, 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 our support for Ukraine continues. Um, Nevertheless, as you said, he has mentioned the possibility, and this is not the first time, of the use of nuclear weapons. I think our response to that has also been quite right, that this is, this is a bluff, even though he says it isn't, that actually if he does seriously move towards nuclear weapons, the counter-reaction would be so strong that Russia would lose out of it rather than the reverse. But you, you can't be entirely sure you get into deeply irrational, dramatic situations where he could do something very stupid. So while um, we don't... Uh, we don't let our blood run cold at what, he, uh, what he's, um, he's just said. We do let it run a little bit cooler. We need to watch what sort of corner we're driving Putin into. I'm interested to get your thoughts on, you know, the sort of choreography and all of this, because President Putin was expected to make this address live to the nation on Tuesday night. It was much delayed. We actually thought it was cancelled at one point. And then this time yesterday, yeah. it was put out to broadcasters as a pre-recorded uh, video and it wasn't clear, you couldn't even identify where he was recording that from. Do you think that is an indication of chaos behind the scenes, of an awareness and acknowledgement of what you were describing, the, the fact that he must have known this partial mobilisation would form some sort of backlash and weaken his position in the country? I mean, what's your analysis of all of that? I mean, chaos is probably not the right word, but intense policy disagreement within the Russian system. And Russia, despite all of our, the way we present it, is not an absolute dictatorship. Putin has to argue with his own army, with the, the people who are immediately around him, all of whom are securocrats. And obviously there was a very sharp disagreement. The army has been pressing him to launch mobilization for months. And he's been resisting it for the reasons we've just discussed, because Putin fears a, an adverse Russian public reaction. That argument obviously reached a climax the day before yesterday, um, and was finally settled with the, with the army having won the argument. Uh, but it is a sign that there, there, that there are squabbles going on in the Russian regime at the moment. They know they're losing the war. They know they have to pull themselves together. And the result was, as you say, the, uh, the very odd uh, release of the, of the information. And I suspect we will see more of that if Russia continues to, to, to have to retreat.